I bring you gifts and a confession. The gift I'm giving you is you're in the presence of the finest black man on the planet. <laughs> the confession I have is I have a love affair with chicken. <laughs> My family has a love affair with chicken. And we fight over chicken. And while some of these fights are fun and funny, chicken in my household has become one of those relentless pursuits of, for excellence. And we struggle as a family to really deal with who gets the big piece of chicken. You can kind of tell from my portly exterior that this is, <laughs> this is a battle I tend to win pretty well. But let me go ahead and introduce you to what happens at the Miller Abode when it comes to chicken. It usually starts with, Woo! Daddy brought home some Popeye's chicken. <laughs> Everybody's excited. Now this, this collective yelp sounds benign, but it conceals an insidious plot. <laughs> They're after my piece of chicken. <laughs> and it usually starts off like this. And it's usually one of my children, but not always. Daddy, you're the best daddy in the whole world. <laughs> that individual's the suck up. <laughs> the next one comes in and then tries to touch the, all the pieces of chicken. <laughs> that disgusting human being is a contaminator. Then there's another one that comes and says, oh, dad, I had the worst day at school. Mom dressed me funny. My friends don't like me. I'm really struggling. And our dog died. We don't have a dog. <laughs> that one's the victim. There's still another one. I, don't, I do have a big family, but there's still another one that comes and says, dad, Go upstairs, the toilet is overflowing, it's a mess. Now, I would have almost fell for it, except this person was like, on the way to the chicken box. That's the distractor. And the worst of the worst is the one that comes in and says, I'm feeling a whole lot of hostility. Some chicken, chicken frailties going on right now. Can't we all just get along? Well, that waste of skin <laughs> is the politically correct one. I submit all these personalities are present, and they're all competing for me, the gatekeeper, because I'm the one standing in the way of them and their ambitions. I submit all those personalities, though, exist right here with you, too. And in all the fights, all the struggles that we're dealing with in terms of who can get this p piece of chicken, in all of that, we miss an underlying truth. We're all hungry. Okay, so Toby, how do you solve this? How do you deal with these disputes? I could normally approach it and say, you know what? I'm daddy. <laughs> I get to choose. My word's the last word. Now, that works when they're five. <laughs> but autocrats never empower. So I've had to learn how to say, even though it's questionable whether or not they're still human beings in my, life, my eyes, I've had to learn how to say, okay, whatever they're experiencing, whatever they're feeling at this moment is very real to them. And even though I probably struggle with this, because they're all after my piece of chicken, right? I have to recognize that how they feel is real regardless of what category they're falling in right now, all right? They, they're, something they're dealing with is real. Okay, Wusa. Next step. Well, I've got to go ahead and help them avoid positional debates. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm black, yes I am. You're white, 
This is my piece of chicken. This is my piece of chicken. We get into these positional debates. And what happens with positional debates is they can go on forever and build a whole lot of anger. Daddy goes ahead and figures, I can stop this right now. Let's pray. And my family's like, oh, daddy's going to pray for 20 minutes. I'll never get to the, it's going to be, okay. So what happens at the moment where all of a sudden I start saying, let's go ahead and pray, everything gets quiet. And all of a sudden they stop focusing on each other and the fight with each other and start becoming partners on how can we get this food distribu distributed before daddy does this prayer right. They become partners. And when they become partners, we create time and distance between the arguments. It eliminates that, po the, that positional debate. It eliminates it. And all of a sudden, we're able to start focusing less on the fight and more on Niall wants red beans and rice. Hannibal wants some of everything. But his is more like thighs and wings. OK. Catrice, she just wants wings and a salad because she eats like a rabbit. Me, I want breasts. There's no more really, no more effort to sell an idea. No more real dedication to being so afraid to offend that we lose or that person lose authenticity. It almost comes to the point where my daughter will say, Dad, I know that's your piece of chicken, but can we talk tonight about possibly sharing? Now, even though that's my piece of chicken and I'm really not in the mood, because we've created this time and distance, we're able to start hearing each other differently and solving the problem. Additionally, that time and distance, again, eliminates the poison of political correctness. Because political correctness gets people more angry at the individual. You didn't say it right. And less focused on what's important. What are the fundamental interests that we're dealing with? I submit some of you even here are probably still a little mad at me. Because I said breasts. And not the largest piece of chicken in the box. I didn't really come here to talk about how to solve disputes around chicken. I submit that the process I laid out to you invites us all to figure out how to solve issues of chicken in your household, but race relations and any other issue in between. So let me go ahead and try to summarize, put a, put a bow on some of this for you. How do we get to it? Part of getting to it is abandoning, abandoning excuse me, political correctness enough that we become partners. And when we become partners, we fight less with the partner and get less angry at the partner than we did get angry at the poison, the issue, the problem. I submit we have to create time and distance. Because when we create time and distance, it allows us to build a capacity, a reservoir of empathy, and allows us to actively listen. And when we do that, we're able to hear more than our own voice. And the final piece is to begin to excuse mistakes and be intentional about asking questions. When we do that, all of a sudden we recognize these are human beings. And even though they have a different experience, it doesn't make it any less valid. I'll finish with this. Some people tend to come up to me and say, Toby, I'm not racist. Well, some of my best friends are black. And I say, me too. <laughs> but what we miss in that, that moment, I understand what they're saying. But what we miss in that moment is a desire for them to not see race or racism or any other ism. And when we do that, when we allow for that, we're saying, it's gone. It doesn't exist. I submit that doesn't eliminate racism or sexism or any other ism. As a matter of fact, it insults intelligence and it makes things worse. 
So I've laid out some ideas for how we can get to solving issues of chicken in my household, chicken in your household, or race relations. Now, as this fine gentleman gets ready to take my leave, I'm interested in finding out who wants to go to the buffet so we can have some friendly disagreements where we can abandon political correctness long enough to become partners, when we can go ahead and create time and distance enough so that we don't get into ruinous debates and off of position, and so we can excuse each other and our own mistakes. Thank you.